Welcome back to the Launchpad. I'm Zach, and this is your weekly pre-launch preview for April 28th through May 4th, 2025. This week is packed with exciting missions, from multiple Starlinks to Amazon's first Kuiper mission, a historic launch attempt maybe in Australia, and a major vote that could reshape NASA's leadership. Let's dive right into it. We kick off the week with eight launches in 44 hours. First up, Firefly Aerospace will launch their Alpha rocket with the Message in a Booster mission on Sunday, April 27th. Launch is scheduled for 1337 UTC, 937 AM Eastern from Vandenberg Space Force Base in California. Less than three hours later, China is scheduled to launch a Long March 3B rocket with an undisclosed payload at 8.55 UTC, 4.55 AM Eastern from the Satellite Launch Center. Later that day, SpaceX will launch Starlink 11-9 from Slick 4E at Vandenberg Space Force Base in California, liftoff set for 2241 UTC, 6.41 PM Eastern. And again, just hours later, SpaceX will launch Starlink 12-13 from Slick 40 at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station in Florida, with that liftoff set for 2.58 UTC on the 28th, 10.58 p.m. Eastern on the 27th. The back-to-back launches continue on Monday, April 28th, with China planning to launch another batch of SatNet Group satellites aboard a Long March 5B rocket. Liftoff is set for 20.05 UTC or 4.05 p.m. Eastern from the Wenchang launch site. Then, just a couple hours later, the United Launch Alliance is back out on the pad for another launch attempt of Project Kuiper KA-01. ULA is targeting 2300 UTC, or 7 p.m. Eastern, for an Atlas V liftoff carrying the first batch of operational Project Kuiper satellites for Amazon. To close out the day, SpaceX is set to launch Starlink 12-10 from Historic Launch Complex 39A at NASA Kennedy Space Center, liftoff set for 137 UTC on the 29th, or 9.37 p.m. Eastern on the 28th. Now, Tuesday, April 29th, keeps up the launch pace with Ariane Space set to launch a Vega C rocket just hours later. Liftoff set for 9.15 UTC or 5.15 AM Eastern from the French Guiana, on board ESA's seventh Earth Explorer mission called Biomass. Now, a special programming note, on Tuesday, April 29th, the U.S. Senate Commerce Committee will hold an executive session at 1400 UTC or 10 AM Eastern to vote on Jared Isaacman nomination to be the next NASA Administrator. If the vote passes, the nomination will pass to the full Senate for a confirmation vote. If confirmed, Isaacman, a private astronaut and entrepreneur, would make history as the first commercial astronaut to lead NASA. It's a pivotal decision for the future of America's space exploration, and we'll of course have live coverage of that and the space block happening this week right here on the launch pad. After we all finally get some sleep after a packed first few days of the launch schedule for this week, SpaceX is set to launch Starlink 6-75 from Slick 40 at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station in Florida. Liftoff set for 2.17 UTC on May 1st or 10.17 p.m. Eastern on the 30th. Now closing out the week, SpaceX is at it again with a launch of Starlink 15-3 from Vandenberg at 19.40 UTC or 3.40 p.m. Eastern. Meanwhile, down under, Gilmore Space Technology was targeting late April for a maiden flight of their Ares-1 rocket from Queensland, Australia. This would mark Australia's first ever attempt at an orbital launch from its own soil. An exact launch date is still yet to be confirmed, so make sure you stay tuned for updates. And that's your rundown for this week's pre-launch preview. From Kuiper to Starlink to SatNet, the constellations in low-Earth orbit keep growing. Don't forget to subscribe and ring that notification bell so you never miss a launch live. Head over to our second channel, TLP Space News, to stay up to date on the latest of space news on and off planet with our Space News Weekly episode. And let us know which mission you're most excited for in the comments down below. Head over to tlpnetwork.com slash launches to stay up to date as the launch windows are always changing. And until next time, add Astra to the stars because space is better together.